Well, happy Monday coming Community Church. Pastor Thomas here, and I'm excited that it's another week. Uh, it's a little gloomy outside today, but certainly uh, is worth uh, an opportunity to gather again around God's Word. Before we do that, though, just a couple of things in the way of announcements. First, don't forget our prayer meeting this upcoming Wednesday at uh, 2 o'clock. The information should be in an email that will go out on Wednesday. Uh, it's the same as we've been using. So if you've joined us with a prayer meeting or on a uh, Bible study or a theological training institute, any of those sort of things, uh, it is certainly an opportunity for you to, uh, to come and to pray with us. Um, if you're watching this and Wednesday afternoons don't work for you, shoot me a note and let me know what time might work for you. I'm certainly open to scheduling additional times of prayer if you are interested in just Wednesday night or Wednesday afternoons rather don't work for you. Of course, continue to check Facebook and, and those things uh, for any other updates. Don't forget um, Adult Bible Fellowship next Sunday. Um, I know it's Memorial Day weekend, but we're going to go ahead and do it anyway for as many as I can come um, since we're not able to gather uh, physically uh, for the service uh, at this time. Do be on the lookout. We should have some information as far as our June plans uh, here in the next few days. Also, um, so that's it as far as opportunities. Uh, another thing you can do that would really help us out is if you're watching this video and you've not liked our Facebook page, um, do that. If you have questions how to do that, let me know. You've probably liked things on Facebook before, but especially like this video. Um, when you like a video or you share a video or things like that, it actually gets it out in front of more people and it expands the reach of the church. So um, I'm not asking this because I want to become a super famous televangelist person or anything like that, but certainly asking you to do that just to expand our reach and to share everything that God's been doing in, in, in and among our midst. If I can talk on a rainy Monday. Same thing with our YouTube channel. Uh, if you go uh, to the email, click on the link and click subscribe. Liking the videos helps too, but especially clicking subscribe helps. Uh, it actually then allows YouTube to say, hey, people find this video interesting and they recommend it to others. So um, certainly all those things um, are a help. Well, with all those uh, out of the way, let's uh, resume our look at the book of James. And um, I'm going to read for us a longer passage, not too long, it's eight verses. Uh, chapter 2, starting in verse 18, I'm going to read through verse 26. But someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith apart from your works and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that God is one, you do well. Even the demons believe and shudder. Do you want to be shown, you foolish person, that faith apart from works is useless? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? You see that faith was active along with his works, and faith was completed by his works. And the scripture was fulfilled that says Abraham believed God and it was counted to him as righteousness, and he was called a friend of God. You see that a person is justified by works and not by faith alone. And in the same way, was not also Rahab the prostitute justified by works when she received the messengers and sent them out by another way? For as the body apart from the spirit is dead, so also faith apart from works is dead. Let's pray. Gracious God, I thank you so much again for what you're doing in our midst. I pray for my church and my church family, and I pray that you would bless them today. Uh, I pray especially that you would give them a measure of joy this week as we open your word to see how you're working. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, Martin Luther is on record. I may have mentioned this in our study so far, but Martin Luther, the famed reformer, is on record as saying that he did not believe that the book of James belonged in the canon of Scripture which just is a powerful reminder that no matter how uh, much a person is used by God, they are still fallible and that they are still uh, imperfect in their understanding always of God's word. 
because we believe that this is God's word and it's here for a reason. And I believe that what James is driving us to is that there is a, a, a nature by which faith and works go together. They are, to use a scientific term, symbiotic, meaning that you can't have one truly without the other. You can do good things, but the Bible tells us that all of our good deeds apart from faith are worthless. And likewise, James is pointing out to us today that all of our faith, everything that we say that we believe is worthless unless we do something with our faith. And he draws the example of Abraham in particular and Rahab as a second. But I want to focus on Abraham in our limited time here. We know the story of Abraham, especially those of us who have been working our way through Genesis as part of our adult Bible fellowship. The joy of this, of James's use of this is that it draws our attention back to a story we're familiar with, that Abraham was willing to sacrifice his son, his only son, the promised heir, because God told him to do it. And the reason he could do that wasn't because he was simply mindlessly obedient, but because God had provided him an heir once, he trusted that God could do it again, even if it meant killing his son. Now, we know that wasn't God's plan, and we know that Isaac went on to, uh, to do great things uh, and, and to be part of that lineage uh, of the promised heir that eventually found its yes in Jesus. However, let's pause for just a moment and ask ourselves this question. Again, does our faith drive us to do what God has told us to do? That's what James is driving at here. Is our faith causing us to do what it is that God has told us to do? That's going to be a recurring theme because it's been something that's been weighing on my heart. And it's my prayer that in the days and weeks to come that we as a church will rally around this idea that says faith without works is dead. We don't do things to earn God's favor. We don't do things to, to find ourselves justified by God but instead we do them because we are justified by God and our works are a fruit and an evidence of what God has done in our lives. Well, I pray that this finds you well and that you are encouraged. Be praying that you go out this week both in joy and happiness to do the work that God has called you to do. And we'll see you again on Wednesday. Until then, have a great couple of days. God bless.